Are you guys ready? Are you ready? Turn with me, if you would, to the book of Acts, please. The book of Acts. I'm going to minister to you today on this word, revealing the coils of the python. Revealing the coils of the python. In the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 6 through 10, and then again we'll jump to 16 through 18. If you have chapter 16 of the book of Acts, find your way to verse 6, and when you have it, say amen. When you have it, stomp your feet. When you have it, stomp your feet. When you have it, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. I began this series calling the Department of DOD, Distractions of Destiny. The second phase of this particular message is going to be the revealing of the coils of the python. In the book of Acts, chapter 16, verse 6, it begins reading in this wise, Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Pyrrhesia in Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia, when they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Verse 16, if you would, jump down to verse 16. Once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the most high God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul came so annoyed, became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that very moment, the spirit left her. Father, I thank you for the reading of your word. I thank you that it is the very truth that is necessary and important for our life to continue on in the destiny that you have for us. It is our belief and faith in your word that allows us for our souls to be saved in the belief that your son is the son of the living God who died and on the third day resurrected. And Father, I thank you that he now sits at the right hand of you, O God, interceding for us, the saints. And I thank you for it today, Father, that we have made a way, Father, because of your son. And we thank you for it now. Now, Father, I just thank you that every demonic spirit, every distracting spirit, and everything that will cause the people of God not to hear your word, we thank you that the Lord rebuke right now every foul and unclean spirit. And we thank you right now that our ear gates are open and our eyes are open. Father, let them hear the word of the Lord in this very hour. We thank you for it now in Jesus' mighty name. And all of God's children said, amen. You may be seated. I want to begin to traverse through this particular message because I want to take my time, not so much as to teach, but just to exhort. It's one thing to be in school and you're with the teacher that knows how to teach you, but it's another thing to be in the presence of someone that knows how to exhort to you what's already inside of you. Exhortation is a charge and a decree that will quicken you to do what you're to do. Amen? Exhortation is to come to stir up what's already inside. Amen. Amen. So what you are about to hear is the things that you already have acquired and what you already know. Amen? Now, we hear that they get a vision, so they have an assignment that was given. Not only do they have an assignment, they have directions, and they know where to go, correct? So now they're on the way so they can go and minister to these people, and as they're going on the way, this young lady, calls, they call it a damsel, that has a spirit that begins to shout out who they are. 
I said on the first time I ministered this word is that there's times that the enemy will begin to declare who you are, your intentions, and what you're about to do so that the enemy can stop you along the way to distract you from your destiny. So we've got to be careful. The next I shared with you that in this particular region of Philippi, this city of Macedonia was an idol-worshiping region, meaning there was many gods. They had not yet heard the gospel. They had not yet understood who Jesus is. So Paul and his confidants go to minister the good news, the good news, and they are met by a spirit. Anytime you are doing things for the kingdom of God, you will be met by an opposition. Mm -hmm. How many of you have felt that in your life? How many of you are feeling it right now? How many of you feel like this opposition has not left? I have prayed, I have fasted, I have bound, I have shandered in my Honda, I've learned how to tie a bow tie in my Hyundai. I'm telling you, there are some things that you are facing that keep surfacing in your life like a cycle, and we have to wonder what it is. How many of you are there? Am I talking to a church that needs some caffeine? Am I talking to a church that's been out late because rodeo is going on in San Antonio? Am I talking to a church that is just tired and just going through? Yeah, that's, that's who I'm talking to. I'm talking to people that have been through some things but are tired of going through it over and over again. Every spring, I know that my flowers are about to bloom. But in the process of the flowers blooming, there's also some weeds that come up with it that I didn't plant there in the season. Are you hearing me? But every time I'm about to flourish into something, there's a pesty weed that shows up along with my goods. There's something that comes up in the midst of what you have already planted intentionally for it to sprout. And something shows up at the same time. Are we hearing this? I take time with my plants. My wife calls me the gardener. Amongst other things, it's all right. She looks at me and she says, where's my gardener? And I said, Sancho is right here. (laughs) And she said, what is wrong with your plants? I said, they're in hibernation. It's been too cold. It's been too dark. They don't want to show the goodness just yet. But when the sun and the atmosphere is right, it's about to bloom like never before. But she says, what are you doing with those eggshells in those coffee grinds? I said, I'm putting it in the soil because it becomes one the grinds of the coffee. I, this ain't in my notes. Just, it's not in my notes. But this is for someone that wants to get some nice plants to grow. The used coffee grounds is going to repel the pest. Mm-hmm. It's not going to let the grubs come in and eat up something that has been planted intentionally. And then, the oh my God, then the eggshells that you put in there help become a fertilizer to the soil so that this way it can begin to make the fruit stronger. Some of y'all are going to be going to buy eggshells and use coffee grounds, putting it all over the place. But what I do know, that you don't see the benefit of it until it's time to spring forth. Amen? Amen. But every time you're about to see something great happen in your life, something negative shows up. Mm. I said, Lord, I'm about tired of this cycle. I'm tired of this. You've got to review to me. Because I can cut off some plants and you don't see nothing on the surface. But wait for the opportune time. The root is still there, and it's still going to sprout. So I begin to inquire in this particular scripture. I love the book of Acts, and they call it, oh, this is the Acts of the disciples. No, it's the Acts of the Holy Ghost. But I had to find something in this scripture to be proven, why do I keep facing the same old thing over and over? Why does it keep coming around? And I've done everything that I know to do. The Lord said, let me show you something. 
And I want you to see what this is. There's been many great teachers that would teach on the Python spirit. It's in it to help you. It's been what Revelation does. It reveals the purpose. And once it's revealed, it can no longer be concealed. Amen? So when I begin to read this, I have an understanding now that the enemy is trying to stop us from our purpose. In Acts 16, verse 16, that particular spirit that you see there is a spirit of divination. The spirit of divination that the young lad had, the young damsel, spirit of divination is that of, of a python. The python spirit tries to destroy the purpose of God. It always hangs around, and this is just a couple of things, worship, intercession, your finances, government authority, apostolic, and prophetic ministries. This spirit works very closely with three other spirits. Number one, Jezebel, which is an occultic empowered. It is an anti-prophetic and manifests a great deal of control. Jezebel comes against the prophetic. This is one of the faces that you will see that when the prophetic begins to move, then someone will be used with this particular spirit to try to stifle it. You want to know how you stifle the prophetic? Is by releasing false words. <laughs> you release a false word within the congregation. Someone receives it. It has now been deposited in the soil of the ministry, and it waits for an opportune time for it to show its fruits. But it will remain dormant for a season. The other phase, number two, is Leviathan, which is pride. It bites down and then twists. It twists the word, the motives, and your ability to understand one another. And the ability for you to be understood. It twists communication. In the echo. Watch this. It is a river dragon. Watch A river dragon, a water dragon. It will manifest wherever the Holy Spirit is flowing. Do you understand that? It will manifest anywhere the Holy Spirit is flowing. Now, I want you to understand this, that this particular spirit, is going to come in to try to stop the flow of what God is doing for the intended house. Are, are you understanding this? You, you get in a place of momentum and purpose, and you're moving in that direction, and you feel the Holy Ghost moving. You start to see things transpire. You start to see people getting healed, receiving a word, beginning to get uh, loose from certain things in their life, and then all of a sudden that spirit begins to manifest. It comes up, and it begins to show itself so subtle that the individuals do not know it. Now, I don't know about you, but we have to think in this logically. If a snake was to show up right now in this service, I would see quick movement, and I would see people responding very, very quickly as opposed to just sitting there and just looking. Hello? Hello? But we also have to understand not just the traits or the characteristics. We have to know who sent it. Hmm. Number three, a spirit of Absalom, which manifests an over-spiritualizing ambition. Did you hear what I said? Over-spiritualizing ambition. You ever been around someone that's so spiritual? They had a vision about this. They had a dream about that. They heard this. They saw this. And God said to do this. 
But then you look at the fruits in their life. Hello? They get all kinds of written or logos kind of words. They get rhema word, but then their life doesn't reflect what God spoke concerning everybody else. Hello? Are you with me? So they're so spiritual that we, we, we tend to have a tendency to be around them because they're so spiritual until you begin to see the fruits of their real spirituality and realize they're not spiritual. They're religious. Very religious. So religious that they rather look down on others as opposed to looking at themselves on what they need to do to make right with God so they can be in right standing themselves with God as opposed to looking at others and trying to put blame on them. Should, should I say it again? Because what happens with the religious spirit, we then begin to look at people and say, this is what is going on in your life, but you're not looking at yourself what is going on in your own life. The spirit will manifest that way. You know, <laughs> it is self-promoting. I had a, oh, Lord. Be careful. Let me just say this to you, you ministers, you pastors, you evangelists out there on YouTube and when you finally watch this. You don't go to a church and give your credentials. You don't go to a man or woman of God to give all the things that you have done. You go to a woman of God, to a place of worship, to a man of God, to a place of worship, and you go and sit under that authority till the authority sees your fruit. And when the fruit can be discerned, then they know what God has called them to do in your life as what you are to do in their life. It goes in many different facets. Instead of you bringing your own resume, this is what I do. Are, are you hearing me? Now, let's just bring in here within the congregation. How many of you have seen people come in and tell you what they've done in their past? Mm -hmm. They tell you, well, this is what I do. This is what the Lord has called me to do. And this is how I'm going to continue doing this. The Lord is telling me I'm going to go here. The Lord is going to tell me, oh, that's good. That's all kinds of zeal. That's great. But let's use some wisdom. People should see the fruits in your life and understand the call that God has given you. Because if you're saying, God told me to do this, but you ain't doing it. God sent me to the house so that I, I, I can help out. I'm going to be a pillar of this house. What ministries are you in? Keeping the chair warm ministry? Okay. <laughs> Testing the coffee and the donuts ministry? Okay. If he sent you to a house, there's a need we oh lord oh this is not a soapbox this is what i see happen in every place i've been people show up looking in how the the church itself can launch them to their next place not realizing that the step that they've got to first do is submit to the authority help the vision of the house and do what is necessary in the house and make something happen for somebody else god makes happen for them. So I'm going to talk to some folks in here that just maybe, maybe they, it just went over their head. It's over spiritualized. Because when I go to a restaurant and I go to eat, if I go and sit down and no one comes to take my order, is my food ever going to come to my table? No, you can't circumvent a process that is in place for your life and expect to have a different result. You have got to stay within the process that God has mandated for you, and then you'll begin to see the manifestations that he has in store for you. Hallelujah. Amen. This particular spirit keeps you from doing what you're supposed to be doing. Hmm. Python, <laughs> tannin is the, the Hebrew name, tannin, which, which manifests in compromise, anti-apostolic. It hates prayer and especially prophetic declarations. The spirit of Python will manifest in compromise the anti, anti, it's anti-apostolic, 
It hates prayer and especially prophetic declarations. Here are some of the characteristics of a python. I was going to put this on a PowerPoint slide, but I want you to write it down if you're taking notes. When you write things down, you can recall it later. If you just read it, you will forget it. How do I know this? Because when you read the word, if you do not apply it or put action to the word, you will forget it. Hello, someone. Number one, and there's many of them, but I'm only listing a few. A python spirit is a territorial spirit. It gathers and communicates information about destiny. The python spirit is a territorial spirit that gathers and communicates information about destiny. About the call. About the anointing about the mission. And it gathers information of the spiritual authority to mislead others. Got it? It gathers information of the spiritual authority ultimately to use it against the authority. It guards its territory. Its goal is to, one, to broadcast information, two, to mark people for demonic pressure, and to squeeze out unwanted and threatening ministry in a city or region. I'm going to read it again. Excuse me. It guards its territory. Its goal is to broadcast information, to mark people for demonic pressure, and to squeeze out unwanted and threatening ministries in a city or a region. Now, in a nutshell, on that particular territorial spirit, spirit, if there is an apostle or a prophet within a city that has the ear and the pulse of God for the city, it's come to try to stop the progression and the word. You understand? Why the apostolic? Because the apostolic is the father. The father is the authority. Please hear this, is the authority. Now, I want you to see this. We have been through years, decades, if you will, of absentee fathers. There are more generations being raised without a father that can speak into their life, without a father that will correct them when they're doing wrong or praise them when they're doing right. Are you hearing me? When there is a fatherless generation, you will see a generation raise up to feel entitled. When you have an entitlement mindset, you believe everything good is for you. But everything you need to go through is not always good. So when you're going through something that's not good, you put blame on others, as opposed to looking at your own steps. Hello? Is this, is this making us see that there's some things that we do in life that we, it brings all kinds of chaos in our life, but we want to put it that so-and-so did that. Pastor made me feel this way. So y'all don't get mad. I'll just use me as an example, Okay. Don't look to your neighbor, the one that you haven't been talking to much lately. Don't, don't look that way. Look to the one that you like, the one that responds to you, that, that shouts amen with you. Look to that one and say, ain't that so true? Ain't that so true? 
Haven't you had someone that just is more quick to point faults in everybody else, but never looks at how they just offended you a few minutes ago? Have you had someone there like that? Keep looking straight now. Just keep looking straight. Just look this way. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> put, the, put the tunnel vision. Put those blinders. Just, just, just right here. What I want to share with you is, is that this particular spirit is going to move within your belief system. It's not afraid of being around the Holy Ghost. Did you hear what I just said? They fear the name of Jesus, yes, but they're in more trouble when the believer believes in the name and the power of Jesus. Then they begin to tremble because the works will be nullified and void if they understood who they really are. But the trick of this particular spirit is to squeeze out your faith in the word. So when something comes on like you're afflicted with some sort of uh, illness in the name of Jesus. Fever be gone. I mean, some of the aspirin had just didn't. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Exercise your faith. Exercise your faith. Nothing wrong with it. But you have to believe that the word is written by God himself inspired it. It was breathed into the spirit of man so that it can be put to pen and paper to be written. Amen? So that we can see what God's intention is all along. Yes? Now, what I want you to understand, when I begin to study this, the Lord says, and I know the law of first mention. The law of first mention, anytime you look at something, a word in Scripture, you want to go back to the very first time it was mentioned in the Bible. Right? The law of first mention. Because then at that point, you will have the understanding of what that word means, and then everything after that will begin to build on it to give you a better understanding. So the law of first mention. So I understand Genesis. Genesis is the first book in the Bible. Yes, we all know that. Hallelujah. Oh, damn, I'm making sure we're in the right church. But when I was doing my study, I said, you got to understand my mind is, well, if there wasn't man in the beginning, who wrote Genesis if nobody was there to write it? Have y'all thought that? I thought it for a long time. And finally, I began to ask God, wait a minute. You got to really speak to me because I'm, I'm not playing with the full deck. And I know I get a little slow. But I have to see this for what it is. So he reminded me of Moses. I said, Moses wasn't there with Adam. How did he know? He says, Moses asked one thing of me. Show me. Your face. When I read that, I said, yeah, okay. He says, when else did I show my face? When he created Adam and Eve, after he created everything else, when he created everything else, what did he do? He spoke it into existence. But when he created man, he reached down into what he had already created. My God, hear this. And his hands formed, my God, man. That means you, every single one of you. That's the only time that God revealed who he is with his hand that always moves for us. Moves for us. Now, I said, oh, do I like it? Move your hand. God, just move your hand for me. Move it. He says, you don't want my hand. You want my breath. So then, after he created Marty, me, he lifted me up. He said, gordo, because, you know, gordo. You are called 
You will be a man of God. You will go through some things. But no, I will always have you in my hand. But my hand doesn't give you life. My breath gives you life and gives you purpose and gives you power and understanding of who I am in you. And he breathed right into my nostrils. I said, Lord, I've been praying for your hand to move. He says, you're always in my hand. You need my breath to resuscitate you from what you're going through right now. Woo! There's times I wanted to quit. There's times that I wanted to check out. There was times I wanted to cut things off and I wanted to be removed from this place. And the Lord stopped me every single time. You can abort your message. You can abort your purpose and your word. But when God breathes into you, it is the very purpose that he gave you to continue on. Are you hearing this? So when I read that, I said, Adam and Eve were created by God physically, and he gave his spirit then in the garden. The pneuma, the breath of God, the purpose of God. Do you understand that? But that didn't explain to me how it was written. And then he says, you remember when Moses asked to see my face? He was bringing him back to the time of creation. He says, I can't show you my face, but I want to show you what I've done. You know, you missed that. I want to show you my history, what I've done in the past. Because you weren't on the scene then, but since you have followed me, you have come to the mountaintop to spend time with me, and you don't care about everybody else's business down there committing sin. You came to be with me. And when you put your focus on me, let me show you what I've already done. Get ready to write because it's about to be a long story that when I took time to hang the stars, the moon, and the sun, and I separated the water from the earth, I began to do a thing for you and for mankind once and for all. I breathe life into you. You will always be in my hand. Moses, let me show you my hand. Hand, because you will always be in a hard place, but my hand is there. Woo Come on, George. Get, get me through this thing, George. Come on, George. I, I'm telling you, he had to show him his history. Look, you weren't on the scene, but when I created your granddaddy, when I created you, I created you by purpose and design. You may feel like you're going to st st stutter. You may feel like you're inadequate. You may feel like you don't have it together. You may feel like you're a murderer, an idolater. You may feel like you're less than, but I've given you my spirit. And when I breathe life into you, it's purposed. It's for you to do the things of God for the kingdom of God. That's why this spirit comes in to try to suffocate you from the breath. If you ever had a panic attack, you can't grasp the air. You can't even understand where your next air is coming from. I need air. I'm tired of feeling the grip and being choked and I can't breathe. Reveal God the purpose 
of what I'm going through. He says, I've got you in my hands. I've got you in my hands. Look back at what I've already done in your life. Look back at the last victory that I have shown you. Look back at how I brought you out to a place that you still haven't been to before. You're seeing new things in your life. You're experiencing new places in your life. You're getting new things brought to you. Do not forget that my hand has you. He's trying to stop you. He's trying to keep you. He's trying to stop you from getting the things that is rightfully yours. He messes with your mind. He messes with the purpose and the plans in your life. But he's not there to stop it. He's there to take the breath of God out of you. He's not afraid of you. This spirit will continue his tactics if we don't understand what they are. Oh my God. I don't want to chop it up, but I'm going to stop at this point. And I'm going to share a couple of things that I want you to see. Some of the symptoms, and I'll get back to this, not next week because Danielle will be here, but the following week, and I'll continue on for this series. But I want you to hear this. Some of the symptoms is you become very lethargic, very sluggish, and isolated. And you become hopeless. Another symptom is poverty, frequent letdowns. You're always striving, but struggling. Every time you try to move in the direction with your business, job, even your savings, something always comes in to deplete that. When your money becomes funny, so does your faith. It's not that you're putting trust in your money. You're putting trust in your time. Amen? So when you put your tithe in his hands, you better hear this. If the enemy can come in and snuff out your money in your account, you'll begin to doubt the tithe. So in the scripture where he says, bring all your tithes into the storehouse, and I will rebuke the devourer. That word devourer is tannin. The same thing is actually tannin. It's the same word for the serpent, the devil, and python. I will rebuke the python in your finances. It can no longer devour your finances, your plans, and your purpose. If we were to have the full understanding how powerful your tithe is, Oh, Lord, whoever you are. Money is not here to save you. But money answers a lot of prayers. How do I know? Because most of the prayers the children of God are praying is to be debt free. Isn't that something? And we're children of a king. Y'all help me with my finances. He said, look, I've, I've already done it. You're playing with it. You're playing with it. If you just follow my principles that work not just for my children, they work, period. You put your seed in the ground, and what the seed is, it produces after its kind. That was established in the garden. 
So when he made man from the earth, the ground, he gave us dominion over the ground and the seed. Hello? Some of you going to miss this. Some of you going to miss this. Because there's some seed that is still in the ground from your forefathers that has yet to be harvested, that is yet to be brought in for you to take account that was laid up for you for generations. And he says, I stored up the wealth of the wicked for those of my righteous. Watch this. Some of us have ancestry that didn't do right by God, but it didn't matter what was put into the ground. You're going to read. You better hear this. You better hear this. Those same principles apply to the wickedness, the sins of the forefathers. You've been fighting something that you hadn't seen in two generations back, but it's been hidden through a generation of forefathers that you didn't even know about and now you're facing it right now. The spirit of Python waits for the opportune time for it to rear its head. Now, I, I can't stand snakes. I don't, if you're snake lovers in here, that, amen. I can't stand them. I never played with lizards. My kids would tell you I don't play with lizards because I believe they're dinosaurs. They're dinosaurs. I've never seen an animal that, that negative. And then it changes colors. And then they took me to go see a Komodo dragon. I said, oh, no, no, no. You seen the claws on the Komodo dragon? See, that's how I know I'm not supposed to be like Steve Irwin, being out there like the crocodile hunter. Not me. When I got invited to London, I said, that's a city? I'll go. He said, no, you're going to Africa. Oh. You're going to see some snakes you ain't never seen in your life before. When we would look for some people that were missing, we had to go look over there in the streams and in the ponds, and we would find a figure in a, uh, what is that one snake? Um, the anacondas? The pythons? There would be a figure within that body, and they oh, there it is. True story? True story. Elder knows. They told us. Little boy was coming home, didn't make it home when he was shepherding the, the, the goats or the cattle, one of the two. Have to pass through this area because when you go back to the sticks, it's, it's back there. Didn't make it home. They went out looking. They found the snake because it couldn't move. It had the, the, the body still in it. Sad, isn't it? They don't move fast, but they know how to camouflage. They know how to camouflage, be hidden under things that you can't see make the wrong step and it gets you in its grips its intention is to begin to coil itself around you sizing you up to suffocate you of the life that God gave you to take out the very spirit that he put inside of you which is the spirit of God that is the intention of this spirit and it goes even deeper but if you're feeling the squeeze and you're feeling the enemy come at you from all different angles. There's so much more, and I'm not going to rush through it for this reason. We're going to continue to see the attacks, the strategies, the symptoms of the coils. But it lays hiding and waiting. Just waiting and waiting for you to make one false step. And it begins to coil itself around you. It sizes you up. It 
starts at the feet. Why the feet? Because it's a foothold. Not the stronghold yet. It always starts off as a foothold. And then it begins to grow with you. Oh, the pressure's on. It begins to coil even more. But it won't coil your neck. It'll face you eye to eye. Why the eyes? A portal to your soul. Your will. Your emotions. had someone that always playing with your emotions tells you things that you want to hear but then when the truth is revealed that's not even who they are it's that Rico Suave kind of python ay mi linda que chula que estás que bonita su ojos you're so beautiful and radiant Lord has blessed you. You're going places. The anointing on your life is so beautiful. I know the Lord sent me to you. For you women out here to sing. Some of you men too. I don't know if they're true or know they're true. The first argument you have, it will be after what the thing that's inside of them begins to manifest. If your father and mother say, I want to meet this so-and-so and they don't want to, what's inside of them just manifests. They don't want to see authority, see their faults. That's the easy part. Here's the next one. If they only want to see you, for their purpose, and then they're jealous of other people around you, their insecurity has just shown themselves. And you will always deal with it. Always. Unless they get healed and delivered. So you single folks in here, I was asked, why don't we do a single ministry? Because you ain't going to stay single. Come into a whole place. You leave home. You don't go to a singles ministry to hook up. Hello, somebody. Why don't we have like a nightclub night when we can get together? Why don't we? You come to a place that's whole, be around whole, whole marriages. And you know what to look for. Amen. And when they come into your life acting a little sideways, you already know. You already know. Back to the street. Woo! Stand to your feet if you would, please. Stand to your feet as we close. I'm going to pray this prayer. As I'm praying, and if you know this is you, and this is something you've been dealing with, I want you to come to the front. I really want you to see your patterns. See what keeps circling itself around you over and over. So we can put an utter end to it. Amen. Thank you, sir. Close your eyes and bow your head. As George is playing, I want you to really search yourself with this. 
have you been ensnared or in the coils and you're ready to be loose from it? Come forth. Father, in the precious name of our Lord Jesus, I thank you right now for each and every individual that you reveal truth to. And that whatever the enemy has done and how it's encoiled themselves and ensnared them, Father, I thank you for the revealing truth, oh God, the revelation that once revealed can no longer be concealed. I thank you, Father, that you bring them to that place, oh God, so that they have the understanding, God, that it's time to be loosed of this particular spirit. And for those that are thinking, Lord, I make this altar call over and over. You keep coming to the altar until that situation or that circumstance changes because he will always keep you in his hand.